You know, I never had one of these uh, Ghetto Blasters, but I had a blast playing Ghetto Blaster. <laughs> Hey kids, um, do you remember the days when music was available on cassette tapes, when those were common? Um, because these little things are one key ingredient to the game. The other one, it's a portable, battery powered tape deck with uh, inbuilt loudspeakers. It's commonly known as a Ghetto Blaster. In the game Ghetto Blaster, you portray Rocking Rodney, the owner of a Ghetto Blaster. <laughs> um, he's having be, he's been hired by uh, Into Disc Records to well test their new songs on the street. You pick up the tapes from behind blinking doors. You have to get some batteries and then you're good to go. Yeah. Your objective is to get enough people to dance by hitting them with the notes. With the music. Uh, hitting them with the music? Yes, uh, the game uses an odd way to represent getting people invested, emotionally invested in a song. When you press fire while the Get Blaster is uh, playing, a couple of notes are well fired from your Get Blaster, from your character. Anyway, you're tasked with getting the required amount of people to dance. Then hand the tape off at Interdisc Records Headquarter and then go and get the next one. Of course there are some obstacles, otherwise it would be way too easy. First of all there are the tone deaf walkers who kind of remind me of the uh, stereotypical way moms are portrayed with a striped shirt. Uh, they will damage your ghetto blaster, so then you have to take it to the uh, repair shop. Then there are the cops. While they won't damage your ghetto blaster, they'll turn down the volume. Probably because uh, it's an annoyance to work while you're having music blasters in your ear. And some people will seal your tape. The bandit of the beat who has uh, brown hair and uh, wears a black cap as well as black uh, clothes. There's the gangster of the groove who has uh, blonde hair and wears black. The chameleon is only represented by the outline of the person. Uh, he also sends you to a random distant location within the confines of the city, of course. Funky Town. Yeah, the place is called Funky Town, and this is not the last of the puns. Not the last of the musical puns. Uh, the streets are usually named after songs as well. Anyway, there are also three characters that will instantly end the game for Rodney. The Psycho Killer, who I best remember for his catchphrase, Kiss Kissy, 
which is simply French for what's that? He wears white pants and a black shirt. Then there's the pusher man, your everyday drug dealer, who probably opposes music since it keeps his customers away. He's fast, he has a blonde beard as well as uh, a black hat, and of course black clothes. And then there are the jolly green giants who are in the park where one of the tapes is located, one of the last tapes. Uh, but how do you control the ghetto blaster? Well, if one decreases the volume, F3 increases the volume. F5 turns the ghetto blaster on and off. If you, the player, uh, need a moment to catch your breath or think, uh, pressing the spacebar will pause the game. And uh, backspace changes Rodney's uh, ethnicity and Q calls it quits. So yeah, it's a fun little game with quite a lot of catchy tunes. So give it a try and see if you like toying around with a ghetto blaster. In two weeks there will be a new episode, the first of the second year. And I will take a look at the predecessor of one of the games I already looked at, uh, from episode 7 actually, uh, Movie Monster Game. And the game I'm going to look at is Crush, Crumble and Chomp. So, see you then.